Imagine how you would feel to trade and profit as well as you ever have, finally. Well, in this video, learn the four keys to a junior prop firm trader profiting better than he ever has before. Hi, I'm Mike Bellafuri, co-founder of SME Capital, and we're a proprietary trading firm located in Midtown Manhattan. And I'm also the author of the trading classic, One Good Trade and The Playbook. Click our subscribe button so you don't miss any of the videos that we're producing for you in the trading community. In this video, a junior trader shares one of his best trades ever, but more importantly, what has propelled him to trade as well as he ever has. I'm going to be talking about an all day wedge breakout trade in Tesla that I made um, a couple days ago, last week. So Dr. Steenbarger and I, after March's historic performance on the desk, got together and said, hey, how do we leverage the great performance that our guys had? And one of the ideas that he had was, why don't we have all of the traders present to all of the other traders a best trade from the month of March and the, the key best practices that led their death. So it's not just what did they trade well, but it's why they traded well. And so, you know, one of the things to note from you is that you're doing a lot better. You came in with a ton of experience prior to that relative to the, the typical SM trader mm -hmm. and have tried a bunch of different things. You have it, it, one of the great mentors anyone could possibly have. You're on Shark's team. Mm -hmm. Shark's one of the great active traders on the street. And uh, you, you have a bunch of resources, but it does take some time. Um, and then even after take some time, there's been a, a really significant uptick in your trading. Any reasons for that? Yeah, so I think that, you know, f for a little bit of background without digressing too much, a lot of my previous experience has come in trading S&P 500 futures. Most of my work has been developing, you know, how to trade high beta momentum stocks off the open, kind of in tandem with the spies and the futures and and building my levels using market profile and, and having certain momentum driven indicators that I use. And that's kind of been the formation of my system. But you know, what really never clicked for me was how to make those, you know, psychological shifts, managing risk, uh, choosing when to be selective and, and really, you know, ironing out a bunch of non, you know, chart pattern type things that are way more important in trading, in my opinion. So, you know, with the uptick in volatility, I, I certainly felt that there was maybe a little bit of pressure on me, given the fact that, you know, I have spy trading experience, I, you know, make it a point to do that when it's in play. And, you know, now we have this historic volatility, it's really my time to step up and see whether or not I can, I can trade consistently in this type of environment where there's so much opportunity. So really, you know, I, I had to make the decision, I really needed to double down and triple down on, you know, specific parts of my process that could really bring that trading, you know, to the next level for me. Um, the biggest one, you know, with this whole quarantine and, and trading remote, I've been in St. Louis, you know, for eight weeks now, six weeks, seven weeks, something like that. Can't even keep track anymore. But something I really dialed in on was having rigidity in my routine so that I could recognize when I wasn't necessarily in what I would consider like a flow state. You know, when am I going to be trading well? When am I not going to be trading well? Am I on tilt? All of those different, you know, variables in your psyche it's a lot easier to iron in on those when day to day there's extreme consistency in your routine. I wake up at the same time every day. I drink my coffee at the same time every day. Like, you know, things that kind sound of robotic and, and silly are actually so important for me because I need to be able to recognize when I'm not doing well based off of some other type of psychological trigger. I don't think this is silly at all. And that is why Dr. Steenbarger and I crafted this exercise for the desk, which is this stuff really matters. It's, it's not just what you're trading well, but why you're trading well that you need to study. And I wrote a, a tweet over the weekend that could have been talking about you, <laughs> where I said, uh, the trader trading the best that are from this month, considering experience, is up about 25 grand for the month. This is about 1 million less in p l than the best trader. <laughs> I think we know who that is, yeah. who would acknowledge, uh, and, and that trader, you know, who's up uh, 
about a million dollars more would acknowledge that that trader should be up more given his abilities. You're competing against your best. And so th this stuff isn't silly at all. I mean, you experience for experience, pound for pound, trader for trader are, are trading as, as well as anybody at the firm. And these are some changes that you've made. And so it's not just about, it's not just about, hey, I like this setup, I trade this setup well, let me go look for those setups and trade them more. That's important, trade your playbook. But it's also what gets you trading those playbook trades for you at your best. So rigidity yes. and routine, mm -hmm. and super then, helpful. Um, from there, you know, as, you know, for me, I've been during this time, like rapidly increasing my buying power and my risk. Um, and in that process, I've been doing it very methodically. Um, a set percentage increase every single time, you know, obviously working with Carlton. Um, every 10 days net positive, if I'm happy with the trading over the course of the 10 days enough to bump my risk, I bump it up methodically. I trade a relative basket of stocks that doesn't change too much. And because of that, you know, going back to the routine and, and having a feel for the certain things that you're trading to, you know, I know what type of size I need to be trading in Apple, Tesla, NVIDIA, all these high beta momentum stocks I'm trading. And because I know that, I can very easily say, okay, I just bumped up my risk 25% in these setups. I need to be increasing my risk 25%. And when you're when you have some type of methodical way to increase your size, it becomes much easier to just think about it as numbers and, you know, not really let the P&L affect you too much. And that's really been how I've been able to size up, I think, rather quickly um, with the volatility as well. And, you know, capitalizing on both of those opportunities to get bigger and make more money. And, and you're sort of in quarantine with, with Tom, who I know you mentioned a lot uh, right. as, your, as, as one of your trading mentors. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, so we got to give him, we got to give him a shout yeah, out and his, yeah, we'll give and him his a podcast shout out, give him with, credit. With, with Joe Fami. Those guys mm -hmm. are crushing it. Yeah. It's fun to watch. They're, they're so, they're so comedic. So who are you in, so who are you in house quarantine with? He's here. His wife's here. There are four kids, my girlfriend, one of them. Um, and then the other girlfriends of some of the boys have been stopping by as well. So it's been a full house a lot of nights, you know, we'll have seven, eight, nine people here. <laughs> But he won't let you into his trading den. No, no, no. Um, it's, it's, I'd say it's a two-way street. He doesn't want me in there. And, and sometimes it does not as good for me to be in there either. You know, we both have. While we trade the same kind of methodology and, you know, most of the things I'm doing are set in stone exactly the same way he'd approach them. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, you still got to be the one to click the button and, and deal with your own psychology, which is that, you know, hidden variable that is so important and, that I think that he taught me really well to harp on immediately. You know, I need to recognize that that's the bigger thing. And, you know, all these chart patterns and everything, a system can be developed pretty easily. That actually kind of leads me really well into my next point. And this is something you actually talked about a lot when, uh, when I first started in. If you want to learn three real world setups that our traders use, including the simple setup that we teach all of our new traders and the setup that turned one of our traders into a seven figure big money earner, check out the free webinar that we're currently running. Just go ahead and click the link that should be appearing right now at the top right hand corner of your screen. That's going to open up this free registration page in the new window. So don't worry, you're not going to lose this video. You're going to learn more in a couple of hours from this trading workshop than from years of online education. I believe you said, look back into your past and try and find areas of personal success or, you know, academic success professional success, athletic success, and look to kind of replicate that in trading and capitalize on your own mentality. So I thought about that for a lot. And, you know, what really made sense to me was, so I was an offensive player in lacrosse, you know, all through high school, basically, you know, from the time I was in sixth grade until I played a little bit in college. That whole time I was an offensive player. And, you know, in high school, all I remember is just taking shot after shot after shot after shot. And you're probably familiar with basketball too. Like, having a short memory. You know, if you miss a couple shots, you still have to have the courage and the confidence to take the next setup, take the next shot. So that really, I kind of like have adapted that as my own MO, I'd guess, and, you know, capitalizing on, I might have an idea and until I'm really wrong on the idea, 
or until I lose my set amount of risk on that trade, you know, I have to keep attacking it and putting in the, the effort that it deserves and reminding myself that I might make mistakes along the way. But if the next setup comes up, I still have to be able to capitalize that. Yeah, I mean, I think that's super important. I stole that from Dr. Steenbarger. Fairness to me, I always give him <laughs> accreditation for stealing his idea. I thought about this myself in the past, and I thought about why I've been successful, why, why I was successful as an athlete as well. And I, I had never really thought about it before until he challenged me to think about it. We were in a, a room one day, and he challenged everybody to think about it. And I was taking notes, as I always do when he talks, and left the room and went back and thought about, you know, I, I'd always, you always know, knew growing up that you were a successful athlete, but I'd never really taken the time to understand why I was a good athlete and, and what specifically I was so good at. And I thought about it and, and I've written a little bit about this. And then that is a good example right there. And I thought about in other parts of my life, you know, why did I do well in school and why did I do well in business? And that has to go into you building your trading business because we do right. have we do have these strengths and sometimes just don't take the time to really understand what our true strengths are and how powerful how powerful they can be to our trading career we do really well when we're playing the game on our terms we exactly. do poorly when we're not playing the game on our own terms and and you know there's just going to be certain things that we're not particularly good at. Um, but I, I was teasing Tom this weekend that when you talk about your trading mentor, you always talk about Tom, mm -hmm. um, who I know has been very influential and, 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 and rightfully so. Um, and I was teasing him that, you know, your mentor at the team at the, at the, at the firm is shark, uh -huh. but yet, I don't think I've ever actually heard you say that Shark is my mentor, but you've always, you always say Tom is your mentor. And so I always te I was teasing Tom that. Yeah. <laughs> I guess you know, that's more. He, of the... he, you have so much respect for Tom that he, for, he forgets this uh, world yeah, class trader who this world class <laughs> trader who sits right next to you every day. Yeah, that's feel bad about as that. As good too. as it gets. Um, so. Well, I'll make a quick note on that, too. I guess that, that really ends up coming down to, one, just, you know, he has such a vested interest in me for obvious reasons, and two, um, a lot of the individual mechanical setups that I'm trading that have, you know, led to my consistency are right out of his playbook and not necessarily Shark's playbook. I think it'd take a lot more from Shark in terms of specific ways to manage risk. You know, anyone who's studied his trading knows he's just incredibly good at, you know, bandwidth, moving his risk around, knowing what to attack and, and how to really just throw massive size at really, really good ideas and also how to manage drawdowns. So those, I, I kind of get a lot of, you know, professional type mentalities that, you know, for all Tom, you know, he's an excellent trader, but he's an emotional being and he'll be the first one to tell you that. But a lot of like the mechanical ways to really excel, I've taken from Shark for sure. Let's, okay, so now I guess we'll dive into the specific setup. So this was my top trade actually so far in my career, um, you know, in straight terms of P&L. I think that there's a lot of arguments that could be made for, you know, me trading this a lot better, but we'll get into that. So in terms of the big picture, you know, how the market currently is sitting, you know, we put that SPY in, that low in SPY in at 218. We were in full blown liquidation mode, global economic shutdown. You know, everyone's experiencing, experiencing this at home. You guys know what we're dealing with. And since then, we've had a V-shaped recovery forming off of those lows. We're back in a range between 270 and 280. Volatility's collapsing from you know, unseen levels. TVEX was nearly at 1,000. Once again, we shift into a stock picker's market as you know, institutional participants are trying to figure out what to do. The interesting thing that you see like sentiment-wise, if you've, you know, are well-versed in financial Twitter or doing anything like that, there's a lot of people doubting the up move, you know, fantasizing or planning for the coming downturn. Oh, you know, with that March low, there's no way. Many countries have peaked in cases, but the fact is that, you know, there is footprints of institutional money being put into many growth and momentum names, which again, just leads me to 
my previous point that it's currently a stock picker's market. You know, we need to follow volume, relative volume, daily chart patterns, etc. Um, yeah, and, you know, harping on that point, what was working in March is not necessarily what's working currently in April. Um, for me, high beta momentum names need to be breaking daily and hourly chart patterns to really give the best potential to capitalize in a market like that. And those are kind of the setups that I'm leaning towards and what kind of led me into this potential setup in Tesla. It's a quick snapshot of the SPY daily, you know, fresh, no EMAs or anything on this, um, you know, p- purely price point alone. Basically almost retraced, I think the high from today actually was nearly 61.8% retracement of this entire down move. Um, so obviously we bounced quite a bit from, you know, one of the steepest down moves in history. So fundamentals for Tesla, obviously a well-known company, high beta. Um, Tesla's an automotive company, electric powered vehicles. Uh, I think it's safe to say it's widely considered to be the leader globally in this space. Um, in late 2019 and early 2020, Tesla experienced a parabolic move. Uh, went nearly to 1,000 a share from 350 in just two months. During this time, there was a massive amount of short interest leading into the move that accrued over years in the stock um, that essentially capitulated into that up move. Um, and then it collapsed as well with the overall market all the way back to 350 a share, basically as quickly as it had originally risen. However, since the market's V-bottom, Tesla's followed and has basically doubled again off the March low and is now above 700 bucks a share. So, you know, the reason I highlight that, the purpose of really recognizing, you know, the larger picture deal with the stock um, is that you have to have the foresight to recognize that just because it capitulated like that, the short interest begins to build again instantly. I think that the sentiment on the company, like, there's some perma Tesla bears and things like that. You have to recognize that on an intraday time frame, a stock that so often traps shorts is capable of doing that all the time. Just because of that up move, I don't think anything really has fundamentally changed too much with the company. And that process is still in play all the time. You can see the short float's still 13.76. So not, not like astronomically high like it used to be, but it's still prevalent. Um, ATR is enormous, you know, 52 points. And average daily volume, 17 million shares. Quick snapshot of the daily, kind of what I just, you know, went through. Parabolic up move, collapse, put in a lower high, and basically just, you know, cracked with almost everything in the market. Broad-based market sell-off. Led us all the way down here, and then since then, it's kind of retraced a good portion of this move back up to these, see where this volume came in, these, like, historic levels. And then since then, it's just been in a really, really tight consolidation between 775 and, you know, basically 675, 700 bucks. On the hourly, you can kind of see this entire consolidation is being fueled by this power gap right through here. You know, really strong uptrending day, gaps up and has held this entire range. So kind of, you know, leading forward into the, the PowerPoint underneath 700 like this kind of bottom end of the range becomes important on the day where we make this trade. So here's how I kind of go through generating the idea to trade Tesla in this specific way. Um, For me, it's one of my favorite momentum scalping stocks, you know, just for, I guess, a little aside, my average winning trade is about 30 minutes long. So I'm not really holding anything for all day, but this particular trade ended up being um, a swing that was based off of scalping entries. Um, it has a tendency to drive with price, with directionality, um, and really break away from breakout points with momentum. And that's kind of like a scalper's dream. So following a week close on April 23rd, and then a slight gap up, I wanted to see how it dealt with green to red, and eventually if it held two-day view up, and that'll be much clearer when I show the charts. The idea was a, for sure, for a short setup to show itself early in the morning, you know, some early selling, get some shorts eager to, you know, follow through if they held overnight and had that gap go against them to be happy to, you know, now we're back at break even from the previous day and we'll see if this has any type of continuation. Maybe it breaks the range underneath 700. Who knows? That's all playing into the minds of all the participants in this stock. And then once that pattern began to show, 
I was looking to see if Tesla can do basically what it always does and get back up into the highs of the day and break back into the um, the morning range from the previous session. And that'll make more sense too in a second. And like I said, 30 minutes or so on average winning trades. I knew that this trade was going to take a little longer if it held the prices I liked. Um, because to the upside, it basically had like a half ATR of range that it needed to digest. So it would likely take a little bit of patience for that move to play out. So quickly going over the mechanics of the setup, I kind of did touch on most of this. Early selling off a slight gap up, an early green to red move. Ideally, it would flush the $700, which is kind of like a psychological level, and then rebid very quickly. It would pop back above into green, maybe even above VWAP. And then wherever it drives out from that price, I want to see if a pullback can hold. Not necessarily VWAP, um, but really just holding the morning lows. So once I determined that the pullback would hold and the stock would stay green, then I'd start to look you know, for a level to risk against and the potential for us popping back into that previous day's morning range would continue to increase. And then just for systematic purposes, I use a 9, a 21, a 55, and a 200 EMA in a one minute. Um, that's, you know, they're all derivatives of price, so don't look into it too hard, but it's the way I kind of gauge trend and trail my stop and look to add. If you don't have a system, you know, it's going to be really hard to be systematic with sizing and things like that going forward. So I use short-term moving averages with specific tells for each of them. Um, and this has really improved my consistency overall and my selectivity. For me, the most important one, I like to pick very specific prices um, because I do a lot of reading the tape. Um, specifically around my entries. And I oftentimes I'm looking for like trend reversals to scalp out of. So that $700 uh, level was really important for me just because I kind of knew that the entire range off of that gap was being propped up by that level. Um, and I would really like to see them kind of spook anybody who's being sloppy with their stops or who has sell under orders, et cetera. And once that rebid, I knew that it had the potential to, you know, psych some people out and, and potentially move back higher and squeeze some shorts. So oftentimes, you know, kind of how I frame that is that, you know, institutional participants like to use certain levels on the tape that have great liquidity. So oftentimes that'll be whole numbers in these high beta stocks. You know, they're not going to drop a bunch of, of shares in at like, you know, 760, 27 cents. It just doesn't really make much sense. And it's just not the way they go about doing their business. So you can expect them at major whole numbers to potentially be moving size for just liquidity purposes. And in these higher beta stocks, $100 increments tend to act that way on the tape. So I was interested in seeing if there was gonna be anything going on there early. So let's check out some charts. So right away, I know this is gonna look like super cluttered. If you've never seen any of this stuff before, all these different colors are just short-term moving averages. Don't let them distract you from the price action. For me, I'm just looking for them to kind of gauge price. Like if I have, let's say, you know, the red's the nine, the blue's the 21, the yellow's the, the 55. If they're all kind of stacked in order, it's pretty obvious that the stock is trending. And then, you know, it's a way to do mean reversion on pullbacks. So we extend really far here, and then we pull back in, you know, so anyone who trades with moving averages will have some type of feeling for this. But it's just a way to gauge how price is moving um, to look for potential compressions and entries and for me, I use it to control my risk. So the specific setup, like I was talking about, this is kind of the afternoon range um, that I was interested in, potentially getting some stop runs through here and bringing us back up to this. I, you can't see the previous part of the day. It's not really too important. This breakdown point really fueled the sell-off into the close in this name. So I'm kind of thinking, you know, if we take out this afternoon range, the potential for us to stop run up here and fail somewhere up here is pretty good. Um, and if this move happens later in the day, on the day we're trading it, maybe it has some type of move, which ends up playing out, but maybe it has some type of move that kind of explodes through in price here. Early on, I'm watching the action. You know, we get a sell-off immediately, which is exactly what I wanted. Kind of flashes up a little bit and tests this breakdown point. You know, I'm not, I didn't really start paying too hard of attention to it. I was just kind of following that checklist. Instantly see it rebid 700 after a quick flush. I like that a lot. Then it held it pretty cleanly right here. That's even better. And then we get that move where it goes back to green on the day. Um, and then I kind of just let this play out. I wasn't really too interested in it. I recognize that, like I said in the plan, 
this entire bit of volume right here was likely going to take some time to digest. And I'm not too interested in any type of directional blow through here too early because I don't think it will really have the steam to break above like 720. I think the better trade is to play for a move kind of from the bottom of this range to the top of this range. And I recognize that I really needed to just kind of be patient and see how this pullback dealt. So at that point, comes down. I think I ended up buying a little bit right here that I ended up getting stopped out of here, which was basically a break-even trade. But after that happens, now I'm starting to think harder about the plan. And one of my favorite setups, you know, everything's kind of unique to everybody. I'm, this is kind of like a false breakdown type setup. But we get a breakdown below VWAP, and then we kind of digest under VWAP for a while, especially after we put in a morning high and there's some type of supply a little bit higher. You get this compression here. You know, you can call it a wedge, whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. All that really matters is if you look at this volume, on every up move from these lows, big volume coming in from the lows here, big volume coming in. These are all coming on the green candles, not the red. So big green up here, big green out of these lows. And then once we start to compress really tightly right around underneath VWAP, I like to see when all these moving averages kind of stack together. You know, you can just think from contraction comes expansion. A lot of people talk about that on daily charts, etc. We get an expansion in price up. Right as they're starting to compress here is where I get long. I think I actually front ran it a little bit. It was being a little bit cheeky. Um, front ran it a little bit and then added right as we start to compress. Then we get the drive in price directionally. Big volume comes in again, that's great. You know, we come back up to this previous breakdown point, the high from the first five minutes, sell a little bit, and then look to see if we can hold VWAP. Hold VWAP, um, right around here as we're kind of sitting, you know, see how it deals with VWAP, and then once it kind of holds up, after kind of stop running these people, I decided to add on a little bit more, um, and then we eventually get the break. So I wanna go over the specific executions um, and how it kind of, this is going to have nothing on it, clean chart. This is straight from my log. Um, we compress. This is kind of what I was talking about. Like I said, I front ran it a little bit. Um, usually I would enter around here, but in a stock like Tesla, I think that, you know, I can trade it well enough where I can fight for two more points. Bella will talk about that a lot. You know, you see the setup. You have to fight for price. If I'm anticipating this trade, you know, I can save myself two bucks, get a little bit more size. Um, I was certainly uncomfortable with the amount of size I put on, which is kind of the idea in these A-plus type setups. Um, because, you know, you don't want to get complacent and miss an A-plus trade with, you know, half your size. Because that's not going to pay out well enough risk-reward-wise over the course of, you know, hundreds of trades in your career. Um, I guess, you know, hundreds of thousands of trades even. So it's important to recognize that. And you could always trade around a core, but you really want to be active and get as big as you can. Um, so on this first up move, I trimmed half. Now my risk is covered. You know, I just made six bucks off the low. My original risk was against 705. You know, so I was risking three points. I just locked in six. You know, now on this next pullback, I could be really aggressive and start to trail my stop to this breakdown or breakout point around 708. As we're kind of pulling back into here, you know, if you draw a little bit of uptrend, I wasn't really thinking that as hard. As much as I was thinking there could be the development of like a much larger, you know, several, several hour long wedge. And I think that the higher time frame you go to on any type of technical patterns, the more likely it is that this can play out. And this specific pattern is kind of like a classic short squeeze type pattern. You know, we got a pop up here. This is kind of the first pop up of VWAP. Anyone who shorted here that's kind of underwater will add. They get spooked a little bit. But then it starts to compress and all those shorts from early in the morning um, are about to get smoked if this breaks to the upside. So kind of held through that. I was, like I said, I was uncomfortable with my size. But looking back, you know, in review, I'll talk about this at the end. This is probably one of the most textbook additions, if not entry on its own, that I've seen in a while. And I was kind of thinking that. Um, but I was in so much size at that point. I knew how much I would make if it went. And that number kind of, like I said, this is the biggest trade in my career. That number, if we went to this area in my head, was kind of like larger than life. And if I had doubled down here, I, I don't know what, how well I would have held into this. So you want to get aggressive with size, but not too much that it completely destroys your process. You know, but in review, trying to get better, 
really have to add right here. Yeah, I think also, if you can go back to that, so, you know, you have a bigger thesis in mind that this is going to get good and strong and run. Mm -hmm. And so you do a really good job of taking profits and locking it in. But when you do that, you want to be open-minded to finding the re-entry areas mm -hmm. that are worth it for you. Those re-entry areas, I think of as a completely separate trade. So you're in, right. you're looking for a, a hold and go, you're taking profits, you know, and then, hey, how am I going to make another new trade that has a different stop and has a different target? Maybe it's the pull into to view up around that 710, 711 area. Maybe it isn't, maybe that's, it doesn't go sideways enough. Maybe time of day is not good for you. Maybe you don't like the way it pulled in. Maybe it is that, you know, we have to get a little bit later in the day. We have to get, you know, into that 230-ish area when big money players can step into the marketplace, into the close. And, you know, we can get a pretty significant resistance level intraday that we clear. And maybe we'll, maybe it's a, a momentum trade. Mm -hmm. a new momentum trade and so um i like you taking off and i really like i really like the idea of thinking what's the next trade but you don't have to you let it come to you yeah you let it come to you you, you know a, a good momentum trade it can be a good trade a good pull on trade and the view up can be a good trade you just let it come to you yeah i think that i definitely could have like considering it, end, it also ended up being I had so much unrealized P&L. I was like, even at this point, you know, at this point I was, yeah, I was already up like, you know, a significant, basically I was up my stop at this point right here, which is a huge day already. Um, and then I knew if it went that that was probably going to, you know, completely change the course of the week and, you know, whatever, all that stuff is real and plays into your mind, even on a one or two minute chart, like, you have to recognize the things that are going through your head. So for me, you know, maybe I could have trimmed some off on this first move up. And then once I see the compression, really start to look to attack it right there. Um, but then I like this. I like the sells, you know, sold into strength, um, sold when it started building this candle back up. And then on the second up move, basically dumped it into here, left a little trailer on and on this big reversal candle, just kicked it. So besides you know, for me being, I guess, a little bit too much of a perfectionist and really looking. No, but I think, I think it's good for you to say, hey, I'm up a lot. And for you to have some caution mm -hmm. as to your next entry. I, I think that makes sense. I do think you want to fight that a little bit, though. And I'm not suggesting that you should throw caution to the wind. I'm actually saying, okay, I'm, I'm feeling good. I'm in the money. I've got a good swing trade on. I'm going to, I'm going to stay in that. That's probably how I'm going to make most of my money. I, I booked some profits, but, 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 but if I can find an, another really good trade to enter, it really, I, I, I got to take it no matter how much I'm up. Right. I've got to take it. I, I've actually found a really good trade. My thesis is it can go higher. So i if I can find that really good setup, I've got, I've got to take it no matter how much I'm up. Because if I don't, that's really going to hold me back from being the type of trader that I deserve to be. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, for me, I was really thinking like, I know that this is going to be my, I already knew, you know, and I think it's fair to say at this point, like I sent a message to Team Shark, like I was like, guys, I think, you know, Tesla's about to explode from an entire like day long wedge and trap shorts. So if I had the confidence, you know, to tell my team of like you said, my, my mentor makes a lot of money a year. If I had the confidence to tell them about this setup in real time, expecting that they would maybe take the breakout, you know, why the hell am I not doing it myself? And that's kind of what I, I really think hard about that could have brought me to this being, you know, probably half of my month instead of being a fifth of my month. That's my biggest critique um, with myself. And, and then the second critique, which I think is almost as equally strong um, is, you know, the second day play that ended up coming from this. You know, everyone saw Tesla just absolutely ripped the next day after this. Got a gap up to 735 and went 
basically in a straight line to 800 bucks. You know, as I get more sophisticated with these ideas, if you think about this trade and the amount of p and I'd made on it, you know, what's really stopping me from taking, you know, a tenth of the position overnight, a 20% of the position overnight, recognizing that we just smoked the entire previous day's range. We just came from the bottom end of the hourly range. Now we're pressing to that top end of the range and we could be breaking down, breaking out on the daily chart. You know, I could have been in a much better position to not have to chase the next day. And, you know, that's really how Shark and some of the bigger traders make a lot of money on these intraday swings based off of, or I guess multi-day swings based off of very selective intraday trading. That's kind of how you bring things to the next level. You know, how do I turn this, you know, nice 10-point breakout trade into a bigger picture 100-point move that, you know, completely changes my month. And, and that's kind of where I'm, I'm starting to think hard about. Hey, go ahead and click our subscribe button so you don't miss any of the videos they're producing for you in the trading community. And please take the time to add your feedback in the comments section for what videos you'd like for us to produce next and what you found helpful from this video from all of us at SMB. Train and trade well.